Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Skyhawk Sports Network. I am your broadcaster today, Deshaun Bullock. We are in game one of this SSAC series. You have Point University receiving votes, and you have Bruton Parker College, who is on the road coming in today. Skyhawks right now are on a eight-game winning streak. I repeat, they are on an eight-game winning streak right now. Looking to continue that winning streak, but Bruton Parker also – it's starting to really fire hot as well. They're coming in at 17, 24, 9, and 15 on the season. But records do not matter when it comes to playing. The Skyhawks' last game they played was against Tuskegee. And against Tuskegee, they took that win 12-2. to So for the Skyhawks, they're going to look to continue what they're doing. But the momentum has to keep shifting. On the mound for the Skyhawks, you have number 22, your two-time SSAC Pitcher of the Week, Mr. Cam Sowert. Cam Sowert is going to be one of the seniors that will be honored tomorrow. And as we look really quick, we will look and see for Bruton Parker. Bruton Parker's last game was against Georgia Gwinnett. They did lose that game 17-8. to Georgia Gwinnett, one of the top teams in the nation. Number three, as a matter of fact. They won the series against Loyola. Loyola, one of the top teams in the conference. So, again, they are still rolling hot right now. Would love to continue to try to steal another one. Skyhawks are receiving votes. Skyhawks right now, as we look in the Southern States Athletic Conference, they are sitting at number four in the conference. 14-10 SSAC record, 28-14 overall. You look at Bruton Parker. Bruton Parker's trying to climb right now. If they were to take these games, they could climb and move past Blue Mountain Christian in the conference. So, now number 18, Carson Kirby. as we start the game off, we'll have number 18, Carson Kirby, who is going to be leading off for Bruton Parker. So it's Cam Seward, left-handed pitcher out of Jacksonville, Florida. He's come in with a different mindset. He has nine wins on the mound. He is top ten in the nation as far as wins as a starting pitcher. First pitch, first strike. Make that an 0-1 count. This is the final, final home weekend series for the Skyhawks. Next weekend, they will be traveling to Faulkner University. As Cam Sire will take this next pitch. That is going to be hitting the foul territory. Make that an 0-2 count. As you look at Carson Kirby, he has come into this game batting 352. He has 51 hits, 10 doubles, 3 home runs, 27 RBIs. And he has appeared in all of the games so far that Bruton Parker has played. So Asire will take this pitch. That is also going to be hitting the foul territory. We love when those... Foul balls get hit right near the net. Even when there's a net, some of us still flinch. I won't lie. I do most of the flinching in the press box. Cam Sowert right now does hold the score record for most strikeouts in the game. He had 16 as he had that win against UT Southern. And from that, he did get his second Pitcher of the week. The first one came when he played against CIU in that weekend series to open the season. For, for Cam Seward, there's no such thing as trying to outdo the next. He is just one of those people that just wants to stay consistent. And consistency is what he has showed. That last pitch is called a ball. One, two count. A lot of action that has been going on. We are crazy enough at the tail end of the school year. Crazy to say that knowing that we're in the month of April, as the Skyhawks will be preparing to be heading off for the SSAC tournament, which would be in Jackson, Tennessee this year. It's a lot of movement that can still happen. Faulkner University sitting at number one in the conference. You have Loyola sitting at number two, William Carey sitting at number two, two-way tie right now. And then, of course, Point University, number four, Mobile, number five. And that is the first strikeout for Cam Sowert. Started off right there. Now you'll have number seven, Kyron Coleman, who's going to be coming to bat. Batting 226 on the season. At bat 53 times, he has 10 runs, 12 hits, and three doubles. And one home run on the season, 15 RBIs. So with that first strikeout, that is the first out of this inning. 
as today is going to be a single game. Tomorrow will be a double header. With that double header, we will have 11 seniors that will be honored in between games. So that will be called a strike. So for our viewers that will be watching the game tomorrow, especially for the viewers of Skyhawk Sports Network, and if you have any seniors that you will not be able to attend for, please, after that game, once stay on the live, we will have our senior day aired. That last pitch was called a ball. You have a 1-1 one, one count. Sire will take this next pitch. That is going to be a swing and strike. Swing and a miss. 1-2 count. As we look out for the defensive side for Point University, of course, you got Cam Sire on the mound. First base, Danny Gonzalez. Second base, Mason Davis. Third base, Jason Dower. Number 11 is Sam Baker at the shortstop. Left field, Slade Mink. Center field, Silas Butler. And in the right field, you have number one, Kenny Jackson. Last pitch was called a ball. Brings to a 2-2 count. So we'll look at some of the seniors that will be honored. It will be in numerical order as that one is going to be hit into foul territory, keeps it at a 2 2 count. So your seniors for tomorrow that will be honored will be number three, Mason Davis, number five, Sage McWaters, number eight, Slade Mink, number 15, Austin Tebow, number 21, Jason Doward, number 22, Cam Sowert, number 24, Gene Aberrett, 25, Trent Shepard, number 32, Dominique Julio Lopez, number 33, Zeb Baird, and number 38, Ben Beasley. So as that last pitch was called a ball, you have a full count. Sour looking to take this next pitch. And it's also going to be hitting the foul territory. It's always crazy when the ball gets hit in the foul territory, especially more in the road area because it's either going to get hit into the graveyard or it is going to be hit, hopefully, in the road and not anyone's car. So far, we have not seen anyone's car get hit this season. As Mason Davis will ground that one, that will be thrown in for the 4 3 put out. And now batting, number six, Tate so now you have number six, Tate Worrell, coming in, batting 336 on the season. He has 51 hits, 11 doubles, and four home runs. Slugger percentage of 487. He's been walked 12 times, hit by pitch twice, and he's been struck out 43 times. So now Sauer takes that first pitch that is going to be called a ball, 1-0 count. And today, as we are on April 19th, we are one week away from our Hall of Fame ceremony, our inaugural Hall of Fame ceremony at that. You will have six people that will be honored. As you'll have Mr. Scott Gregory, who was a 1981 graduate, men's basketball Carlton Griffin 2002 graduate men's basketball Courtney Lowry 2018 graduate from women's golf last pitch was called a strike then you'll have Angela Moki Alfaro class of 06 graduate women's soccer you'll have David Strickland 2016 graduate of football and you might know this name you'll have Tori Woolley as that one is a swing and strike on that, and they'll bring it to a 2-2 count. Tori Woolley is the last senior from class of 2012 men's basketball, and your current women's basketball coach will be honored. It would be lovely to see all of those six Hall of Fame nominees. If you have not gotten tickets, please check it out. As Cam Sauer will get that strikeout. That is two strikeouts. No runs, no hits, and none left on base at the end of the top of the first. We will be right back here with Skyhawk Sports Network.
for your Skyhawk. Denny Gonzalez. And welcome back as we are with Skyhawk Sports Network. Bottom of the first inning, you have number 10, Danny Gonzalez, who will be leading off for your Skyhawks. Danny Gonzalez, right now, he has been on a tear lately. So far on the season, he already has 39 hits, 7 doubles. So that last pitch was called a strike. He swung at that one. Pitching on the mound, you have number 4, Alex Munns. Pitching record of 3-4 and four so far. He's made 14 appearances. That last pitch was on the inside. Danny Gonzalez, you've seen him in a few different places. You've seen him play second this season. Recently, he has made the move to play first, and he's been really comfortable there. Danny Gonzalez right now, he is batting 307 on the season, has 21 stolen bases, so you really got to watch out for him as far as him getting on base. And right there is, like I said, Danny Gonzalez. He will hit that in the outfield, but that is going to be a F9. Now batting number 21, Jason Dower. So a great way for Kennard Dawson to really camp under that. Did not panic. You'll now see number 21, Jason Dower, who is going to be up to bat. Jason Dower, like I said, is going to be one of those seniors that will be honored tomorrow. Jason Dower batting 250 on the season. He has 13 hits and two doubles as Dower will hit that into center field. That is going to be camped under for F8. Now you'll have number eight, Slade Mink. Slade Mink, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! <laughs> Last time he was on this field, he made a highlight. And if you don't believe me, check out the highlight that he made really quick. First pitch is lifted into left field. Slade Mink going back on it, all the way to the track, all the way to the fence, and he makes the catch over the fence. So, like I said, Slade Mink, one of the beautiful outlets, that actually ended up on NAIA ball on that page. That got over like 65, like 28 point K views, really in the 65. The, the likes were insane. Beautiful catch by Slade Mink. Something that you could turn into ESPN. This one is going to be fouled off. That's going to bring it to a 2-1 count. Slade Mink. Batting 380 on the season. On base percentage of 425. Slugging percentage of 476. 28 RBIs. Been walked 13 times. Has three home runs on the season. That one is also hitting the foul territory. 63 hits. He leads the team in hits. Has five doubles. One triple. And 21 stolen bases. And so that is going to end the inning. Bruton Parker not allowing any hits. So you have no runs, no hits, none left on base. So we'll be right back here with Skyhawk Sports Network. All right, number 18 is rushing the ball. And it is a touchdown for Maddie Mott. This game's tied 66. Ooh. Toss. And that's got to be a complete.
All right, and welcome back. We are at the top of the second. You'll have number 21, Michael Sun, who is going to be up to bat. Michael Sun is a sophomore out of Newton, Georgia. So for him, this is really close to home. Newton, Georgia is actually 45 minutes away from West Point, Georgia. Hopefully he has some of his family, friends out here that gets to see it. And if not, hey, tune in. So as Cam Sire will take this next pitch, that will be called a strike. Brings to a 1-1 one, one count. Got our camera operator impersonating the umpire today. As Sire will take this next pitch, that is going to be hitting the foul territory. Brings to a 1-2 count. You look at Cam Sire. He has 89 strikeouts coming into the day. Now 90. Well, 91, as he had two in that top of the first. 91 strikeouts on the season. With the way Cam Sourd has been playing and only has one loss on the mound, again, he is 9-1. and one. You would love to see Cam Sourd definitely get those postseason honors. But for him, he is all about winning. Cam Sourd, proven winner already. As that is going to be his third of the game. Like I said, he is just proven to just be consistent. Calm composure. So now you have your next batter who is going to be number eight, Kennard Dawson. Kennard Dawson, again, had made sure that the Skyhawks did not get that first hit in that last inning. Looking at Kennard Dawson, he's coming into today batting 280 on the season. 40 hits, three doubles, five home runs, 41 RBIs with a 406 slugging percentage. That first pitch is going to be a ball, 1-0 count. So now with the 1-0 count, he'll look to take this next pitch. That is also hitting the foul territory. would like to say for everyone that is so far tuned in to this broadcast we thank you and hope you can stay with us this entire weekend as again tomorrow is a double header this is the final home series for the skyhawks as that is going to be hit into the right field can kenny jackson get that he does miss that so that will be a stand-up double so that'll be the first hit of this inning so you have number nine, Jacob Mantu, coming in batting 289 on the season. 37 hits as Dawson. He just got his 41st on the season. So with one out in this top of the second, you do have one hit for Bruton Parker now. Skyhawks. This, although this is their first year in the Southern States Athletic Conference, they are not brand new to seeing Bruton Parker. They have seen Bruton Parker actually in non-conference play last year in the season. They were actually our first home game. They played each other a few times as that first time last year was a three-game series. Bruton Parker did lose that series 2-1. to one. And then you saw the return again. So it's Sauert. Going to take this next pitch. Takes a peek at second. Be on the outside. That'll make it a ball on that last pitch. For Point University baseball, they have just been on a different tear this season. The focus has just been much different. You can tell from opening day. Had a lot to prove if, as Coming to a new conference, they wanted to prove that this was not going to be a, really a tough adjustment for them. Southern States Athletic Conference, a very tough conference when it comes to baseball. As you have the Faulkners, the Loyolas, the William Carries, the Mobiles, you've seen a lot of those teams already as Point University usually had them as non-conference games. So for some of these teams, they were new, but a lot of these teams, they were not. Ball hitting the foul territory, keeps at a 2-2 count. 
you look at some of the big wins that Point University had on this season, they were the team that gave Loyola their first loss. As Loyola was the team that was undefeated before Point University. They won that series 2-1. to one. Cam Sauer broke the record for strikeouts in that series against UT Southern. Point University also won the series against Middle Georgia on this home field. And then coming into the game, coming to the series where Blue Mountain was a team to watch coming into that. You saw the Skyhawks take that series as well as they dropped game one and then won the next two games. So they're, so the series that they have lost at home was against University of Mobile. That last SSAC series that they did have was against Stillman. That was a series for the kill. You saw them take game one, 13 to 11. So that's going to be a call to ball. And Dawson is going to make it to third safely. So 2-2 two -two count, man, two fed back. Dawson on third, Sourd on the mound. Again, so game two of that Stillman series was an 18-5 win. And then game three came down to a 15-13 win for Point University. So as Sourd will take this pitch, chipped away. Keeps it at a full count. So as Sourd is your game one pitcher tomorrow, you'll see the Dom Lopez on the mound, and you'll also see Max Boyu, who will both be making appearances as the game, as the starters. As so as Bruton Parker will hit that into the left field, that will get the first run. Mantooth looking to go ahead head to second. That is going to bring the first run of the game. Bruton Parker now leading one to zero. Swords, you, you have number 22, Jordan Run, who is at bat. Jordan Run batting 346 on the season. He's appeared in 12 games, started six of them. He's been at bat 26 times, has four runs, nine hits, one double, one home run. So if that last foul ball, that is a 0-1 count. One out is still on the board, two hits in this inning for Bruton Parker. Cam Sauer is going to take this pitch. Swing and a miss brings to a 0 2 count. So is Sour. Takes a peek at second. He'll take this pitch. No one piss on the outside. If you did not see earlier, we did show a game winning clip for women's flag football. Women's flag football this season has finished up their inaugural season in Point University. First in history, they did take three wins. That game winning clip was actually the first win at the River Bowl for women's flag football. That last one is a strikeout. Now back, number 16, Jack Morris. So it's Jack Morris will be coming to bat, bat 299 on the season. But, yes, women's flag football did finish 3-13 and on the season. You look at an inaugural season, and it's really, and especially in the Sun Conference, a lot of tough teams in that Florida area. That last win was against Florida Memorial. The Skyhawks did not, was originally going to be playing Reinhardt this weekend, had to use that game as a forfeit due to not enough players. You got to really be proud of how this season went for women's flag football. Why? Because here's the thing. You come into an inaugural season, you do not know what to expect coming into a lot of competition, especially with a lot of people who were recruited from high school, then a lot of people who were learning the game of flag football. Also want to give a quick shout out to the Skyhawk Sports Network, as this was our first time ever working that sport, and it ran smoothly, I would say. It was pretty fun, very fast sport. Last pitch was called a ball. So really stay tuned as women's flag football has already signed a lot of different athletes. Coach Thesis Jackson had a lot of recruits coming into those games watching and just seeing the atmosphere and just seeing what they can be a part of. And you can be a part of something historic here at Point University. So at the 1-1 count, Sour.
So as we have a 3 1 count, Cam Sauer looking to take this next pitch. That is going to be called a strike, bringing it to a full count. So for Morris, he does have 26 hits on the season. Cam Sauer right now has four strikeouts already. As he'll take this pitch, that is going to be hit into foul territory. Keeps it at a full count. So Sauer. He'll take this pitch, and that is going to be popped up in the infield. Mason Davis calling for that. That is going to end this inning with run, run, two hits, and one left on base. Skyhawks only give up one run in this. So we'll be right back as we will have Alice Marquand, who will be leading off this inning, here with Skyhawks Sports Network. As you have Alex Marquand, who is going to be leading off this bottom of the second. Alex Marquand, somebody that is really consistent. Last pitch was called a strike. Look at Alex Marquand so far. He has been batting 364 on the season. Batting 364 on the season has 51 hits, 11 doubles. Five home runs and 45 RBIs. As now, Alice Marquand was able to get to first base. That ball was a little too high. Now batting number two, Silas Butler. So now you'll see a pinch runner coming in. That will be number four, Hunter Newmeyer. Hunter Newmeyer. Very, very fast. He is strong on a lot of runs this season. You look at Hunter Newmeyer. He has 24 runs. He has stolen the bases four times this season. He's been caught stealing twice. As you look back at that last play, that was just a crazy bounce. It was really just tough to collect that. Those are some of those bounces that's really tough. So as that last pitch was called a strike, you have an 0-1 count. Skyhawks now do have a hit. Check swing. Alpire will check with the umpire on first. 
he did go to call that a strike. 0-2 oh, count. Silas Butler, one of the newcomers who has come in this season. He is batting 241 this season. Has four home runs. As Munns tried to go for the pickoff, unsuccessful on that. Silas Butler, he, transfer that came from Cumberland University. He has just fit in very well with this team. As that will be the first out of this inning. You'll now have number one, Kenny Jackson. If you do not know about Kenny Jackson, Kenny Jackson from the Virgin Islands. Kenny Jackson also recently just won SSAC Player of the Week. And that was actually about two weeks ago. But Kenny Jackson, a player that is very fast, very athletic, that actually April 8th was the day he was announced as Player of the Week. And he is someone actually who hit a walk-off home run and a Grand Slam home run that same series. As so, that will be a double play. We'll be right back here with Skyhawk Sports Network. So as we start the top of the third, I'm going to kind of get off topic really quick. We're going to talk about something that just happened last night. We had three of our student athletes who gave their life to Christ as we had women's golfer Shelby Odom, volleyball player Emma Parker, and women's basketball player Muriel Cannon, who was baptized. I want to give a quick shout out to them and say congratulations as they taking that next step in their spiritual walk. That is something that, you know, we don't really get talked about enough, especially with Point University being a Christian school. That was something that was so beautiful to see. I actually brought water to my eyes witnessing that. So just really proud of them of what they've went for. As you have a one-two count, Sauer will take this pitch. And that is going to be another strikeout for Cam Sauer. Cam Sauer, he is feeling it. He is just lighting it up right now. Again, he is all about consistency. Now Carson Kirby is going to be now back up to bat. For Bruton Parker, they would love to try to string on some more hits and string on some more runs. Cam Sauer right now sitting at five strikeouts on the evening. So he'll take this pitch. Swing and a miss. That would be a strike. 0-1 oh, count. And 
just as mentioned, Cam Howard came into this game with 89 strikeouts. Now already has five. as that is a swing and a miss as well. Cam Sowert now sitting at 94 strikeouts on the season. Would it be surprising for him, for him to hit 100? It would not. As Sowert's going to get ready to take this next pitch. Last pitch called a ball to bring it to a 2-2 count. Again, if we have not mentioned, we will have our inaugural Hall of Fame ceremony Next Friday, that will actually be at 11.30 a.m. at the band hall. Last pitch was called a ball. At the band hall, this will be an inaugural Hall of Fame ceremony. This really will mean a lot to this program as far as athletic department because this is something that has never happened before. So when stuff has never happened before, you really want the first one to go great. You have great leadership by Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics, Ms. Janelle White as that is going to be the first out of this inning. Danny Gonzalez did successfully step on first. As you'll have Coleman, who is going to be coming up. As Cam Sauer right now, he is, with him having nine victories, he is technically two wins away from tying the record which it, with most wins in the season. The most wins in the season from a starting pitcher was Jesse Ford in two, 2018. He was 11-2. Last pitch was in the foul territory. If you look at Cam Sauer, Cam Sauer at 94 strikeouts. Most strikeouts in program history is 118, which was Dylan Griffin. That was in 2016 season. Scouts have had some very storied players come through this program. Cam Sauer definitely is another one of those. As he'll take this next pitch, that will get grounded to Sam Baker. Sam Baker will throw that to first. That will be another out, and that will end off this inning. So, Bruton Parker ends off with no runs, no hits, and none left on base. We'll be right back as you'll have number 33, Zeb Barrett, leading off here with Skyhawk Sports Network. So you have number 33, Zeb Baird, who is up to bat. One of your seniors that will be honored tomorrow. That last pitch was called a ball. 1-0 count. Zeb Baird, senior out of Auburn, Alabama. Also, fun fact, he is a big WWE fan. Shout out to him for that. 
Munns will take this pitch. That will be called a strike. Brings to a 1-1 one -one count. Last pitch was called a ball. It brings to a 2-1 count. You look at Zeb Baird on the season. Last time he was on this field, he ended up he had a beautiful, beautiful triple. He has come into this game batting 288 on the season. That's 36 hits, 10 doubles. So third leader, third leading player with doubles as Kenny Jackson with 17, Alice Marquand with 11, Zeb Baird with 10. He has 23 RBIs. He's been walked 19 times. Make that 20 times. Now batting number three, Mason Davis. So Mason Davis, coming up the bat, one of your other seniors for the Skyhawks, Mason Davis, who has come into this season more of a, been very much of a contributor. Batting 252 in the season, he has three home runs on the season, has 31 hits, six doubles, and 26 RBIs. He's been walked 13 times, has an on-base percentage of 317. And he's been a mixture of playing second base and third base. So as he'll take this pitch. That will be called a ball. Brings to a 1-0 count. Mason Davis, the senior out of Phoenix City, Alabama. He will be your first senior that will be honored tomorrow. Again, that will be after the first game tomorrow, as we do have a doubleheader. That was heading to foul territory. Bring us to a 2 1 count. Also, a fun fact as you have Coach John Tyler in the field, Coach John Tyler did surpass 200 wins, and his wife, who is the head softball coach, did surpass 300 wins. So, on air, want to give them their flowers. Big congrats to the Tylers who have surpassed. They are two. Legendary coaches here at Point University that has seen it all and coached a lot of legendary players. So it's great for the program to have those coaches there, definitely leading players. It's that last pitch was called a strike. That will be the first out of the inning. You'll now have number 11, Sam Baker, your shortstop. Sam Baker has been a speedster, but he can get on base very fast. If you're Munns, you really do not want Sam Becker getting on base. He has an on-base percentage of 351. He is coming to the game with a 285 batting average. Has five doubles, 37 hits, one triple, 13 RBIs. And tw he's been walked 12 times. Last pitch was called a ball. 1-0 count. As Munns looked to try for the pickoff on first. Sam Baker, really athletic, super fast, has a great vertical, and a high IQ on the field. And he's one of those players that you don't really see get a lot of errors. Knocked on wood, as I said. But Sam Baker is really good at what he does, and there's a reason why he has been the shortstop all season. As that one is hit into right field, that will be the second out. Yo, now be. Back at the top with number 10, Danny Gonzalez, who's going to be up to bat. Now batting number 10, Danny Gonzalez. As the Skyhawks do have one hit on the board right now, you have Zeb Baird on first. Munz looking to escape this inning. Not really allow any more hits and not allow... Any more walks either. As he'll take this pitch, that one will be a bit low. That will be called a ball. Brings to a 1-0 count. As Munns will take this pitch. 
That is going to be hitting a foul territory. Brings to a 0 2 count. No, 1 1 count. Sorry about that. It's Gonzalez. Got ready to take that next pitch. That was his far inside. That is going to be a 2 1 count. So 2 1 count, two outs on the board. Danny Gonzalez at bat, Munns on the mound, and Zeb Barrett on first. <coughs> Skyhawks still have one hit. So he'll take this pitch. Bit low. That's going to bring it to a 3 1 count. Gonzalez so far is 0 for 1 on the day. Would love to add a hit, get on base, string along some momentum. One thing about the Skyhawks, when the momentum starts kicking in on their side, it is a different game for the Skyhawks. And with that, you'll now see Zeb Baird moving to second, Gonzalez moving to first, and you'll have number 21, Jason Dower, who's going to be up to bat for your Skyhawks. Jason Dower so far as 0 for 1 of the day. And you'll also see a bit of a... You'll see a bit of a talk on the mound from the coach. And as that happens, we'll take us a quick break here with Scott Sports Network. So now as the mound talk is done, Dower at bat, Baird on second, Gonzalez on first, Munns looking to try to get out of this inning with two outs. That is going to be called a strike. Brings a 0-1 count. So as he'll get ready, take the signal from the catcher. Get ready for this next pitch. As that is going to be a ball. Brings to a 1-1 count. So bottom of the third, Bruton Parker does lead 1-2-0 at the moment. So is Munns getting ready to take this next pitch. Now it's going to be a bit on the outside. It's going to bring it to a 2-1 count. So for Munns, as that first pitch was a strike, now has thrown two consecutive balls. So get the signal. He'll take this pitch. And Dower! Great hit, but that does go into foul territory. You keep that in, and Zeb Baird is definitely coming home, and Danny Gonzalez probably, with his speed, is either going to make it to third or he's coming home as well. So, 2-2 two -two count, two outs, Deuces Wild. Munts will get ready for this next pitch. Dower. And that is also going to be a ball. Brings it to a full count. Now you have the fans starting to really get into it. So far, we have a great crowd tonight. 
again, as one thing you can say about Skyhawk fans, when they get into a game, they really get into it. And so what better way, as that is going to be hitting the foul territory, what better way for it to be their final home series weekend with 11 seniors that will be honored tomorrow than to start off game one with a packed house? So full count. Last one was hitting the foul territory. You have two outs on the board. Munns looking for this next pitch to get him out of this inning and retire this batter. So he'll take the pitch. That is going to be thrown outside. You now have bases loaded. Zeb Bear moves to third. Gonzalez moves to second. And Dower will move to first. And with that, you have Slade Mink who's going to be coming up to bat. So if there is any opportunity that you did not want to be in or any situation you didn't want to be in, it is this. Bases loaded with Slade Mink up to bat. So is it? At the moment, you do have a pitcher who is in the bullpen warming up. Munn so far has thrown 41 pitches, 22 strikes. It's that first pitch it is going to be called a ball. Brings to a 1-0 count. So now, so get ready for this next pitch. And will they be able to get their Slade Mink? Does make it the first. Mishandles that. Zeb Barry makes it home. Danny Gonzalez makes it home. Skyhawks will take the lead off that. So just as we said, that is the one situation you do not want to end up in. Skyhawks will take the lead. So now you have Alex Marquan up to bat. Slade Mink at first, Jason Dower on third. Skyhawks should do lead two to one. First pitch is called a ball. 1 0 count. So right now you might see Bruton Parker's coach who is looking in the bullpen to see if his pitcher is ready, but try to see if Munns can finish this inning. That is going to be called a strike. Brings to a 1 1 count. As we went back to look on that last play, with the mishandle, that was going to be an error on second. So with the 1-1 count, two outs. And they'll look to try to go for the chase down. And Jason Dower does make it home. Slade Mink will make it to third. So just when you thought that they were getting out of this inning, It turns into Slade Mink making it to third. So that brings your score three to one. So you do have a full count on the board at the moment. Slate Mink is on third. Alice Marquand at bat. If you're Munns, you want this next pitch to get you out of the inning. As
as Marquand will get that hit. That will get a bounce. Does he make it to first? That is going to be an out. So now Bruton Parker will survive and retire this inning. And we'll be right back here with Skyhawk Sports Network. As we're at the top of the fourth, you have Tate Worrell, who is up to bat. Tate Worrell so far is 0 for 1 a day. Last time at bat, he was struck out by Cam Sowert. Cam Sowert will be looking to take this pitch here. That's going to be thrown on the outside. Brings to a 1-0 count. Skyhawks are leading 3-1 in the top of the fourth. Last pitch was called a ball. As he'll take this pitch, that would be also called a ball. Brings to a 2 1 count. Want to give a quick shout out to our women's golf team who just finished their season. They finished fifth place out of eight teams at the SSAC Championships. That's a bigger improvement than the previous season. Oh my goodness. We just talked about Slade Mink and the catches that he makes. And he just continues to prove it because that is another highlight worthy catch. Going to check the stream to make sure that our good old camera operator got that. And, yes, he did. That is what Skyhawk Sports Network does. That will definitely be queued up. That's just that's just Slade Mink. We showed it on the stream. That's what he does. That's the first out. So now you'll have Sun, who is up to bat. Brings it to a 0-1 count. So it's Sour. It's going to look to take this next pitch. That is going to be a swing and a miss. 0-2 count. As now he'll get ready for this next pitch. That one is going to be called a ball. 1-2 count. So now Sauer getting ready to take this next pitch. Also called a ball, brings to a 2-2 two -two count.
So with the full count, Sourd is going to be looking to take this next pitch, try to get the second out of the inning, and that is going to walk a batter. So now you're going to see number eight, Kennard Dawson, who has come up to bat. Now batting, number eight, Kennard Dawson. So right now, Dawson did get that first hit. It's one for one on the day. Sun is on first. That is going to be hitting the foul territory. Brings to an 0-1 count. One out on the board. As now, you'll see Dawson... Dower gets it to the second, and that will get Dawson on first. But Dower does get that out. Now batting, number nine, Jacob Mantu. So with that, that is going to be two outs on the board, and that last one was a fielder's choice from Dawson. So if this next pitch with two outs on the board, you now have Mantu who is up to bat. Sauer takes this pitch. She's going to bring it to a 1-0 count. So as Sauer takes that, that's also going to be called a ball. Brings to a 2-0 count. Sauer so far has thrown 73 pitches, 46 strikes, has five strikeouts, and has walked one batter. You do have Dawson who is on first. Mantooth right now, he is one for one on the day. That last pitch was called a strike. As he'll take this next pitch. Looked like it was in the strike zone, but they're going to call that a ball. So, the 3 1 count. Matsu's getting ready for this next pitch from Cam Sywert. And that is a lot of heat. Swung at that, missed that. That is going to be a full count. So now Sauer. That's going to be a swing and a miss. And with that, that is going to end off your inning with Bruton Parker getting no runs, no hits, and one left on base. So we're going to be right back here with Skyhawk Sports Network.
All right, so as we're at the bottom of the fourth inning, Silas Butler does lead off. That last pitch is called a strike, 0-1 oh, count. Munns is on the mound. So as he'll take that pitch, that is going to be called a ball. It brings it to a 1-1 one, one count. So 1-1 one, one count, Silas Butler so far is 0 from 1 a day. He was struck out on that last pitch. And so now you'll see the quick 5-3 for the first out of this inning. So now you have number one, Kenny Jackson, who's going to be up to bat for your Skyhawks. And with that, Kenny Jackson, oh, last time. Number one, Kenny Jackson. It was hitting to the outfield for that out. Now he is, with him being 0 for 1 today, he would love to get on base. Getting Kenny Jackson on base is very dangerous because he is freakishly athletic and very fast. And so Kenny Jackson, just as we talked, that is gone. Kenny Jackson. Hit into the right field, just like I said, getting him on base. But what, what better way? Might as well get a home run. Hey, as Kenny Jackson come into today's game, led with home runs, and he continues what he does. There's a reason why the junior from the Virgin Islands is just that great. And it's because of situations like that, how quick he can change the game. Now you have number 33, Zeb Baird, who is up to bat for your Skyhawks. Now batting. So coming to the day, Kenny Jackson had eight, well, seven home runs. He has now eight. As that is going to be another out for Bruden Parker. Bruden Parker trailing four to one. Now batting number three, Mason Davis. So Mason Davis now is up to bat. That last pitch was called a strike. We hope for the ones who are watching so far saw that beautiful, beautiful home run and just how that just went straight to that right field from Kenny Jackson having to catch the composure again. I mean, you just saw it as he swung at it. That was gone. So the 0-2 count on the board. O two count, two outs. Your months, you want to get out of this inning. Head into the top of the fifth and just regroup. With it being four to one, Bruden Parker could still string along something because the game is not that far away. And Bruden Parker, again, a team that has competed against some of the top teams in this conference, has showed what they could do. Again, in a series against Bruton Parker. No, sorry, a series against Loyola. They did win that series two to one and Loyola is a very tough team. As Munns will take this next pitch, that is going to be a swing and a miss. Munns will get out of this inning. And so to end this inning, Skyhawks end off with one run, one hit, and they lead 4-1. to one. So with that, we will be right back here with Skyhawks Sports Network.
As we are in the top of the six, you do have Tate Worrell, who is up to bat. That last pitch was called a ball. You have a one-zero count. That is also going to, that is going to be hitting foul territory. One-one count. Soward has thrown 95 pitches on the day so far. As he's going to take this next pitch. That is going to be called a strike. Brings it to a 1-2 count. So at the 2-2 two -two count, you'll see Sourd is going to take this next pitch. That is going to be thrown further on the right. That is going to be a full count on the board. So for these last innings for your Skyhawks, they have strung on runs in the last. At the bottom of the third, you had three. And then at the bottom of the fourth, you had one. Then at the bottom of the fifth, you had one. So with Worrell, he does get that hit into left field. So now Michael Sun is going to be coming up to bat for your Barons. Sun is 0 for 1 a day. He has been struck out one time. Cam Sourd will be throwing his 100th pitch. As he gets ready to take this pitch, Sun. That will be called a strike. 0 1 count on the board. As you see, the Skyhawks wearing their navies today. Probably anticipating to wear those baby blues tomorrow. Baby blues was a new addition to this program last year in midseason. And it's just taking the world by storm. Especially, it's been a crowd favorite. If you look on the website at all of the baseball pitches, you'll see some baby blues. You've seen them in the white jerseys. You've also seen them in those navies. Great uniform combination that they do have. So as Sourd did go for that pickoff attempt on that last pitch, he'll take this one as that is going to be hit right past in the gap between second and first. It's going to be another single. So now you have Sun on first, Warrell on second, and you'll have Kennard Dawson who is going to be coming up to bat. Kennard Dawson so far is one for two on the day. So it's Sourd. Takes a peek at second. He'll take this pitch. And that is going to be popped up. But it looks like it's going to be hitting the foul territory. It does. Not sure where that landed. But it didn't hit the press box. So yay for that. So with that, that's going to be an 0-1 count. As Bruton Parker, two runners on base, no outs in this inning. Already has two hits. So that last pitch was called a ball, brings to a 1 1 count. As everyone with the hit is Kirby, Worrell, Sun, Dawson, Mantooth, and Wade. As Sour will take that. That is going to be hit right past Gonzalez. So now you'll see. Worrell is going to make his way home. Sun will make his way to third. And that will be a double in the right field. Now batting, number nine, Jacob Mantu. So if Dawson on second, Sun on third, and Mantu on up to bat now, none on first. It's another hit for Bruton Parker as they now trail 5-2. to two. Mantu so far is 1-2 on the day. He was struck out one time. 
Sauer looking to take this next pitch. That is thrown a bit on the outside. That's going to be a 1-0 count. As we are in the top of the sixth. As Sauer, he'll get the signal. Takes the pitch. So now, as we're back, we do have a 0-2 count. I want to go back and look at that last play from Danny Gonzalez real quick. As he did force that first out of this inning. That's a, yeah, that's a highlight. Big shout out to our camera operator, Nacho Fonseca, for that beautiful way to follow that play got some very talented people on this staff at Skyhawk Sports Network you can't make no you can't make plays up like that that that's something that really did happen that's something if you tell a story if you're telling a story in the future it's like did that really happen if you have video footage it really happened so now Sauer will take this next pitch that is going to be popped up you'll see Dower who's going to look to camp under it Marquand also looking to camp under it Dower does get the out So now Jack Morris up the bat. Two outs on the board. Cam Sourd has thrown 110 pitches so far. 110 pitches. He has seven strikeouts. He's only walked one batter. Bruden Parker, who started off the inning with three hits, now looking to try to string a long run as you do have Kenara Dawson, who is on third. First pitch was called a ball. As he'll take that pitch, that is also called a ball. Brings to a 2 0 count. Skullhawks leading 5 3. Bruden Parker has added two runs at the top of the sixth. So take this pitch. It's going to bring it to a 3 0 count in this inning. And that is going to be called a strike. Brings to a 3-1 count. As mentioned earlier, you will have number 22, Cam Sourd, who will be honored as a senior tomorrow. As he hits that right in the center field, Silas Butler camping under that. That is going to be an out, and that's going to end off the inning. 
Bruton Parker ends off with two runs, three hits, and one left on base. So to lead off at the bottom of the six, you'll have Kenny Jackson, who's going to be leading off. So we'll be right back here with Scott Sports Network. And so now you'll have Kenny Jackson who's going to be leading off this bottom of the six. Last time we saw Kenny Jackson, it was a sweet home run to right field. So now Munns will be looking to take his sec 72nd pitch at his hit in the foul territory. That's going to be an 0-1 count. With the bottom of the six, Skyhawks do lead 5-3. Bruton Parker looking to try to chip back in as Kenny Jackson will hit that right in between first and second. That will be another hit for him. So now you have number 33, Zeb Baird is going to be coming up to bat. So with that, that's another hit for the Skyhawks. That will be their sixth hit on the day. So Zeb Baird, senior from Auburn, Alabama, up to bat. He is 0 for 1 on the day was walked last time at bat. As that last one's called a ball, Kenny Jackson will steal second successfully. So with the 1-0 count, Kenny Jackson now in second. Again, like I said, having Kenny Jackson on bat is very dangerous because he can sneak at any time. And plus, he's freakishly athletic. As Munz will take this pitch. Zeb Bear gets that right in between. And so now Kenny Jackson using his speed. He'll end up at home. And he is safe. So that is going to be a double for Zeb Bear. And that will be another run for the Skyhawks. They will now bring the lead 6-3. So make that the seventh hit of this inning. And now you have number three, Mason Davis, up to bat. Still zero outs in this inning. So as Munns takes this pitch, that is... Swing and a miss that will bring it to a 0 1 count.
as he takes this next pitch. Field on the outside brings to a 1 1 count. Mason Davis so far 0 for 2 on the day. He has been struck out twice. So for Bruden Parker, you want to you want to start forcing these outs. Slow down the momentum of the Skyhawks. Get this back in within reach as that is going to be popped up in the infield. You'll see Munns calling for it. And Ron will step in and actually get that. So that is going to be the first out. So number 11, Sam Baker, is going to be coming to bat for your Skyhawks. Sam Baker last time at bat. Lovely double that he had into the left field. So now as Munz takes this pitch. Last pitch was called a ball, brings to a 1-0 count. So if one out on the board, Sam Becker up to bat, you do have Zeb Baird at second. Baker, the junior out of Prattville, Alabama. It's about an hour and 20 down the road. Big shout out to Mr. Chad Baker, who rarely misses a game. It's always beautiful to see. It's always beautiful to see a lot of players, families that get to make it. But it's also really beautiful to know that our players families gets to tune in to watch their athletes play great representation that they've been this season so far with the 2-0 count on the board Munns will now take this next pitch that is going to be hitting the foul territory brings to a 2-1 count So now Munns taking a peek at second. He'll now take this next pitch. And that is going to be a beautiful bunt <laughs> by Seb Baker. It's one of those things you got to watch it at any time. Munns tried to get their own time, did slip. So Baker gets the first. Barrett gets the third. And Gonzalez will be up to bat for your Skyhawks. So if one out on the board. And Gonzalez up the bat. The Skyhawks looking to add another run potentially. And so Gonzalez splits the gap. So that will bring another run for the Skyhawks. Zed Barrett will race home. You'll see Sam Baker is going to race home as well. And you'll see Danny Gonzalez with the triple. Skyhawks momentum shifting just the way they want it. Eight to three is your score. Jason Dower is going to be up to bat. You now have Gonzalez who is on third. And you'll have coach coming out there to talk to the pitcher. And you'll have a new pitcher coming in in just a second. We'll have who that will be. And as that happens, we'll be right back here with Skyhawk Sports Network.
And so now at the pitch and change, you do have number 38, which is Ryan Dobson. He is the 5'10 junior out of McCray, Georgia. Previous school was Telfer County High School. He'll be taking his first pitch. And that will be first pitch, first strike. Look at some numbers for Dobson. He has a 13.75 ERA. He has a one, he is one and zero. Oh. He has made 16 appearances. He started one game. He has one save. So as that last pitch was called, a ball brings to a one-one count. He has pitched 17 and a half innings this season, giving up 30 hits, 29 runs, 27 earned runs. He's walked 15 batters, but he has 16 strikeouts. That is going to be hitting the foul territory. So if you're Dobson, you want to get the Barons out of the situation that they're in right now. You still have one out in this inning. One, two count. Danny Gonzalez is on third. So he did get that last triple. A two RBI triple at that. That will also be called the ball. It brings to a two, two count. As he'll take this pitch. That is going to be called a ball. Full count on the board. One out. As you look at Alex Munns, he had 83 total pitches, and he had five strikeouts, gave up one home run. So it's Dower getting ready to receive his next pitch. That does split the gap. So now you'll see Danny Gonzalez race home. For another run, your score is now 9-3. to three. Slade Mink is now up to bat for the Skyhawks. You're a senior out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi. So as that last one was a fielder's choice, Jason Dyer did end out. He was out at second with the 6-4 put out. So you have Slade Mink on first. You do have two outs for Bruton Parker, and Alex Marquand is up to bat. Well, <laughs> looking down and then looking back up, seeing a foul ball, I thought my life was over for a second. So at the 1-1 count, just want to say on air, thank you, Jesus, for keeping me here. Woo! I thought my life really did flash before my eyes for a second. So at the 2-1 count, Dobson took that pitch. Alex Marquand with a lovely hit, but that is hit into foul territory, 2-2 two, two count. So it's Dobson looking to take this next pitch. That is also going to be hitting the foul territory. Keeps it at a 2-2 count. As Marquand will split between shortstop and third, that is going to get him a base hit and move Slade and Mink to second. Number two, 
And with that, Alex Marquand now has a pinch runner, which will be number four, Hunter Neumeyer, on first. And you have Silas Butler, who is up to bat. So if the Skyhawks adding another hit, that is now 11 hits on the day for the Skyhawks. Dobson taking the peak at second. That is going to be a bit low. That is going to be called a ball. 1-0 count. So it's Dobson. Gets the signal from his catcher. Take a peek at second. He'll throw the pitch. That is a bit high. That is going to be a 2-0 count. As we look ahead in Skyhawk Athletics, we do still have some action that is coming up. Yes, this is... We're getting to that tail end of home events, but it's still a lot of action going on. As tomorrow, our softball team will be on the road. They will be taking on Faulkner University. That will be a 1 o'clock and a 3 o'clock Eastern time start. Men's lacrosse, for the first time since 2017, has clinched postseason. They will be taking on Weber International at 1 o'clock tomorrow. So it's Silas Butler looking to run to first. That is going to be an out. So that's also going to end the inning. And so then about the bottom of the four, Skyhawks did string along four runs with six hits and two left on base. So we're going to be right back here with Skyhawks Sports Network, and I'm going to get you some more of that action that is coming in within our athletic department. So as we enter the top of the seventh, you will see Daniel Crabtree, who is making his appearance on the mound for the Skyhawks. Daniel Crabtree, you've seen him a good amount of times. He is a junior. Okay, as that last pitch was called a foul ball. He's a junior from Dallas, Texas. Daniel Crabtree. He has made 15 appearances. He has started five games. He has won in three. He has three saves. He has walked seven batters. He has 22 strikeouts. And his ERA is at 446. So for him, looking to definitely keep the Barons 
momentum down. Now, as we look ahead right now, like I said, men's lacrosse will be playing their first postseason game since 2017 tomorrow as that last win that they got against Life University was postseason clinching. Women's flag football will not be playing tomorrow. Do have some po uh, some more postseason action that starts on Monday. Monday you have men's golf. They'll be traveling to Greenville looking to definitely be one of the top teams to finish it off. You'll have your men's and women's track team who will be going to Gulf Shores. And as that last out, that is a 1-3 put out. First out of this inning. We also have our last home tennis match. That will be men's and women's tennis, 4 o'clock, LaGrange College. And then following up, you have day two of golf championship and track championship, Gulf Shores, Greenville, April 23rd on Tuesday. Now on Wednesday, postseason action starts for both tennis teams. As you have women's tennis, they will be taking the court against Middle Georgia at 10 a.m. in Montgomery, Alabama. Men's tennis will be taking on William Carey at 1 o'clock in Montgomery, Alabama. As that last one was called a strike, then the next pitch was called a ball. You have a 1-1 one, one count. Now, again, the, w the week finishes off with our baseball team traveling to Montgomery, Alabama for that weekend series with Faulkner University. And then our softball team will have their season finale, regular season finale, against Thomas University on the road in Thomasville, Georgia. Following that, it is postseason time for baseball and softball. SSAC tournament will begin May 1st for your baseball team. SSAC tournament for your softball team will begin on May 2nd. So as that last pitch was called a ball, that will be Kirby walking to first. You'll have Coleman, who is up to bat. Now batting, number seven, Kyron Coleman. So again, we're at that tail end of the year for athletics. Still a lot of action to go for men's golf. With everything that's going well, if they continue their consistency, they can qualify for nationals which will begin on may 21st and may 20 going on may 22nd may 23rd and may 24th last pitch was called a strike so at this point we're wrapping up a lot of regular season games and really about to enter postseason as that is hit right in between short and third you will see coleman who will get that single So that's going to be another hit for Bruton Parker. Make that number eight on the day for overall as a team. So that last pitch was called a strike. Brings to an 0-1 count. Is that is going to be bounced out of Jason Dower's glove. So if that Kirby advances to third, Coleman advances to second. Now you have bases loaded for Bruton Parker. So Michael Sun is going to be up to bat. Michael Sutton so far is one for two on the day. He was struck out once today. Crabtree looking to take his 15th pitch on the evening. And that is going to be called a ball. Brings it to a 1-0 count. For anyone that is interested in our Hall of Fame banquet that will be happening, go on to pointscowhawks.com. And click the Hall of Fame tab. If you want to see more information on our Hall of Fame class, on the Hall of Fame tab, just go to Hall of Fame Class of 2024. 
And if you want to purchase tickets or forward the ticket link, just go to Hall of Fame Luncheon Tickets. And the Skyhawks will end this inning off with a double play. So we'll be right back here with Skyhawk Sports Network. So now you have Mr. Number One of Kenny Jackson, who is two for three on the day with an RBI. Kenny Jackson up to bat. Dobson, who we're looking to take his 19th pitch on the day. That last pitch was called a strike, brings to a 0 1 count. Also, for anyone that would love to really be a part of Point University and give to some of our programs, go to pointscowhawks.com and go on the link that is give. That will take you straight there and that will give you more information on whatever you need to do. Or if you just want to look at some of our photos that some of our photographers have taken from Skyhawk Sports Network, go to the photo gallery. We have all of the photos that you need. So as Kenny Jackson does hit that into left field. So with another hit on the board, that is. That is going to be Kenny Jackson. And then that is going to be Kenny Jackson advancing to third off that last pitch. So no outs on the board. Zell bear that bat and Kenny Jackson on third. Very dangerous territory for Bruton Parker. So as that last pitch was called a ball, you have a 2-0 count on the board. Again, go on to pointscowhawks.com. We'll give you all the information that you need as far as schedules, rosters, photo galleries from our home events. If you want to look at where to find Skyhawk Sport Network, if you can't go to YouTube, you can just click the link on that page. That'll take you straight there. If you want some information on our mascot that'll also take you there as well and if you want to look at some of our, our new things that we have ticket smarter official ticket place a tick official ticket resale marketplace 
that was recently announced. That is also on there. If you want to read more about that, go to pointscahawks.com. Go under Skyhawks fans, and it will take you straight there. And, of course, cannot forget, even though this has not, this will be coming up more in fall of 2024, our annual Fall Skyhawk Classic. If you already have an interest to make it there, go ahead and start reaching out. So now you'll have pinch hitter of number 25, Trent Shepard, who is going to be up to bat. That will be another one of your seniors tomorrow who will be honored from LaGrange, Georgia. So as Trent Shepard is up to bat, your score is 10 to 3. Skyhawks do lead. Last pitch was called a ball. So as Trent Shepard at bat, Trent Shepard. is batting 267 on the season. He does have 13 runs, 12 hits, two doubles, six RBIs. He's been walked 11 times on base percentage of 426. So as we do have a quick mound talk. I want to continue talking about our website just a bit more. For recruits, if you're looking to become a Skyhawk, Go to pointscalhawks.com. Go under the recruits tab. If you want to know about admission information, you can either go on the admission site or go to point.edu. That will give you a lot more information. Or click admission. If you want to become a Skyhawk, click that page. If you want to know about the guide as a freshman, go to NAI Freshman Guide, Transfer Guide, NAI Transfer Guide. Or you can, go, you can also go to NAIA International Guide. If you really And if you're looking to get eligible, play NAIA is where to go. You can click that tab as well. So this can really be your guide for our current Skyhawks and for your for the future Skyhawks that may be watching this stream and listening. Last pitch was called a ball. It brings it to a 2-0 count. So 2-0 count, Trent Shepard at bat, Zeb Baird on first. As he'll take that next pitch, that is going to be a 3-0 count. As we are in the bottom of the seventh. He takes that pitch. It's also going to be called a ball, so Trent Shepard will walk his way to first. Zeb Barrett will walk his way to second. Now you'll have number 11, Sam Baker. So now you'll see Bruton Parker's coach heading out, and it looks like you'll see another pitcher coming in. And that is that looks like it will be number 20. We'll get that name in a second from Bruton Parker. And that will be Des Moines Hodge. Des Moines Hodge is a sophomore out of British Virgin Islands. Previous school was Bryan College. That is a school in the AAC Appalachian Athletic Conference. That is what Point University used to be a part of. So as Dobson's day will be done, he had he gave up one run that was earned, and he walked two batters. So now Hodge will look to try to get Bruton Park out of the situation, get him out of this inning, get him back up to bat, and try to get some momentum strung along. There's still zero outs, but as he gets his pitches going, we'll take a quick break here with Skyhawk Sports Network.
So now you have Des Moines Hodge, who is on the mound. You have Sam Baker is up to bat. Look at some numbers for Des Moines Hodge. He has made six appearances so far. As that last pitch was called a ball. He has started two games on the season. He has pitched five and a half innings on the season. He's given up ten hits, ten runs. And he's walked six batters, has seven strikeouts. So, with this appearance for Hodge, this will now be his seventh appearance on the season. As we'll take this next pitch. Great hit by Sam Baker, but that is going to be hit into foul territory. Sam Baker right now is two for three on the day. Just a quick, rem just a quick reminder for everyone that tomorrow's doubleheader will be one o'clock game two, really more in that three o'clock three thirty time frame could stretch into the four o'clock time frame. But game two, which is the first game of tomorrow, will be at one o'clock p.m. Eastern time, West Point Georgia in the Eastern time zone, along with Bruton Parker. So anyone that is watching from a different time zone, we will be starting at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So the 2-1 count, Hodge takes a peek at a second. He'll take this pitch. It's also hitting the foul territory. 2-2 two -two count, Carson Curry will be going to go get that ball. For our people that look at our Instagram, I would say Twitter, but it's called X, X, and Facebook, stay tuned for some of our schedule releases that we have for our upcoming sports that will be in fall of 2024. As Sam Baker splits the gap in between short and third, you now have bases loaded. So Baird makes his way to third. Shepard makes his way to second. Baker is on first. So now Danny Gonzalez up to bat. Danny Gonzalez right now is two for three on the day. He has two RBIs. So that is another hit for the Skyhawks. That is 13 hits on the day so far. For Point University, as they look to want to finish this game the correct way, some things that you can probably look forward to for them tomorrow is just consistency. That is something that Coach John Tyler, Coach Kelton Caldwell, and Coach Adam Castillo has talked about the entire season is just making sure that they are consistent. As the motto for this year, and really for Coach John Tyler's one team, one goal, they know exactly what that goal is. <laughs> But leading up to it, taking it one game at a time, that's what you. That's the beautiful attitude about everybody that you love is that they take it one game at a time and just understanding that a job has to be done each time. You can't look too far ahead or you lose sight of what's in front of you. But as we talk about most of the schedule releases that are coming up for the other sports, for most of these sports, this will be their second year in the Southern States Athletic Conference the only teams that are not affiliated with Southern States is women's flag football. Women's flag football, football, and now men's lacrosse. Swim is, swim is a mixture of Southern States Athletic Conference and the Sun Conference. They're more affiliated with the Sun, but Southern States Athletic Conference does have an affiliation with swim, so that is – more prone with the Southern Conference. But as far as the main affiliation for Point University, it is Southern States Athletic Conference. That move was made July 1st, 2023. So as that last pitch was called a strike 0-1 count, Jason Dower is up to bat. As Hodge will take this pitch, Dower, that one does bounce. So as Dower makes it to first, they do save off a run. Now batting number eight, Slay Me. So 
with Zed Barrett, who was racing home, that was a 5-2 put out. That does put two outs on the board, but it advances Trent Shepard to third, Zan, Sam Baker to second. Jason Dower is on first. Slade Mink is up to bat. So that pitch is going to be called a strike. Brings to a 0-1 count. Slade Mink, one for four on the day. Three RBIs. As he'll get that. That is going to be hit straight to third for another out. And so to end off this inning, Skyhawks do get one run, two hits, and three left on base. So we're going to be right back here with Skyhawk Sports Network as we go into the top of the eighth. You'll have Kennard Dawson, who will be leading off. So Dawson does get that single to right field. Dawson now batting, number nine, Jacob Mantu. has strung along multiple hits on the day so far. Right now, Dawson is three for four on the day. So now you have Mantu who is up to bat. Mantu right now is one for three on the evening. As we're in the top of the eighth, Crabtree looking to take his 21st pitch. That one bit high, so that's going to be a 1-0 count. Bruton Parker so far with nine hits on the day. Crabtree went for that pickoff. So as that is popped into foul territory, that is going to make it a strike. Brings to a 1-1 one -one count. So Skyhawks do lead 10-3. Not going to talk about any final results because anything still can happen. But if you're the Skyhawks, you want to finish this game the correct way. It's that last pitch was called a strike. One, two count. And just want to... 
look at this. I just received some news. Our women's golf team, for the first time in school history, has received votes in the NAIA National Coaches Poll that was released today. We received four votes, and we also made the list on the national website. So that is our women's golf team. That is well-deserved from them. Glad to hear that. Coach Greg Bolin just texted me about that. And honestly, they do deserve that. Women's golf, the way they came into this season, their confidence. Now batting, number 22, Jordan Ron. So as I do, I want to take a look at that. Last one was a strikeout. That is also hit in the foul territory by Ron. Yes, Point University did start receiving votes. That is beautiful for a Point University. First time in school history. It's a lot of first time first timers that are happening. And this year has been a great year for women's golf. Women's golf just came in with a very confident attitude. They just they showed it. You saw players like Frederica Zetterblom who had golfer of the week twice this season and she was a second team all conference player at Sydney Ormsby. She was the newcomer of the year in the SSAC Women's Golf. They were voted as the Team Sportsmanship Award. So a Slade Mink is going to camp under that. That is going to be an out. So now you have number 16, Jack Morris, who's going to be up to bat. Jack Morris right now, 0 for 3 on the day, looking to try to get his first hit. Crabtree so far does have a strikeout. Just walked one batter. As he'll now take this pitch. It's going to be called a ball. It brings to a 1-0 count. As Crabtree went for that pickoff attempt, unsuccessful. As we stick within women's golf. Women's golf, you had William Carey, who did win the SSAC championship. I want to send a quick congratulations to William Carey for that. They were a very tough team and a lot, a lot of talented players watching them. Dalton State, who was ranked at number five last time, did move to number seven. And so... A lot of great teams you saw in there. And also Blue Mountain, who is also receiving votes. That's another team from Southern States Athletic Conference. So as Silas Butler does try to come under that, you will have Dawson, who is going to make it home. That is going to be a run. Now batting, number 13, Wade. So now, look like you have a pinch runner on first. Get that to you in a quick second. So, pinch running on first is Jay Reed Phillips. So as Crabtree will take this pitch, that is going to fly out into foul territory. So if your score is 10 to 4, Bruton Parker did add a run in this inning. That is now 10 hits for the Barons on this evening. Last pitch was called a strike, 1 2 count. I want to give a quick shout out to Sage Dining Services, who has provided a lot of our food for a lot of our Point University events. Whether if it was National Student Athlete Day, the golf tournament, and also our Hall of Fame lunch that is coming up, Sage Dining Services has always came in clutch. It's a very big favorite on this campus, so just want to give them their flowers on this stream. So that is flat out into left field. That will end 
this inning. And that will be one run, two hits, and one left on base. So we'll be right back going into the bottom of the eighth. Alex Marquand is going to be leading off for your Skyhawks going into that inning. So we'll be right back here with Skyhawks Sports Network. That last pitch was called a ball. Alex Marquand is up to bat. You do have Hodge, who is on the mound. That last one was called a strike. You have a one-two count. So, 2-2 two, two count. Haas will look to take this next pitch. So now you'll have number two, Silas Butler, who's going to be up to bat for your Skyhawk, Silas Butler. Looking to try to get his first hit on the day. 0 for 4 so far. As Hodge will take this pitch, that will be called a strike. Finds the strike zone. As mentioned earlier, we are right now just in the midst of just giving a lot of people their flowers. As we get into that tail end, it's well deserved. Like I said, Sage Dining Services really want to give them their flowers on this stream. So the last pitch was called a strike, 0 2 count. While we're at it, I want to give our two leaders of the athletic department their flowers. Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics, Janelle White, Senior Woman Leader and Assistant Athletic Director, Taylor Hassel. I want to give them their flowers because the way that they have just really emphasized excellence is something that we have really followed through and also want to give Janelle White her flowers because she has added something part of her title chief student development officer so she is going to be overseeing all of our students as well it's going to be a really beautiful sight to understand that she does care about our student athletes tries to you know do, doing a national student athlete day celebration 
doing our back to school jam, doing a lot of different luncheons, doing a lot of dinners. It's what matters. But definitely want to give our two leaders their flowers. Miss Taylor Hassel, who is a part, who has been one of those women leaders that attends those women leaders conventions. And has just gained a, not a, a lot of knowledge and has helped really bring it here as she advocated for the mental health awareness here for us to really celebrate it and really emphasize how much it is important for student athletes that may be listening. It is very important because you do matter and with mental health, life, and trying to deal with school, it is tough trying to balance all of those. So lovely to see an athletic department that does celebrate that as that last pitch was called a straight that would bring it to a full count so as Hodge will take this next pitch as you'll see him camp under and Kenny Jackson looked to try to run to first, and it looked like his ankle was not feeling okay on that. That will be that final out of this inning. That will be no runs, no hits, and none left on base. So we're going to be going into the top of the ninth. So for Bruton Parker, you want to continue it going. And it looked like we're going to see a new face on the mound. If I'm not mistaken, that is like number 27, Cole Johnson. So... As we make that announcement, we'll be right back here with Skyhawk Sports Network. So a quick apology, that is actually number 38, Ben Beasley. Ben Beasley, one of those seniors that will be honored tomorrow in between the first and second game. He will be looking to finish this game off. As he's going to get ready to take this pitch. That is going to be a ball, brings to a 1-0 count. So now we are at the top of the ninth. Beasley getting ready to take this pitch. That is going to be a swing and a miss. 1-1 one, one count. That is a strike. You have Carson Kirby who was up the bat. He is one for three on the day. He was struck out earlier in this contest. Beasley takes that pitch. It's going to be called a ball. Brings to a 2-1 count. And if you did not hear that sound in the background, that is our good old signature of West Point, Georgia. The West Point train. Great signature because if you're on the way to class, you've probably seen that train because it's probably kept you held up. Last pitch was swung on and missed. That is a 2-2 count.
Takes that pitch. And Ben Beasley, your senior, comes in and adds a strikeout. Now batting, number seven, Kyren Coleman. Ben Beasley, the senior out of Winterville, Georgia. Previous school was Oglethorpe County High School. You'll now have Kyren Coleman, who is up to bat. Kyron Coleman so far is one for four on the day. Kyron Coleman would love to keep this inning alive by adding a hit as that does. Get straight to Sam Baker. Sam Baker looking to get it to first. And that is going to be out of there. Great athletic play by Sam Baker. Just as I told you, Sam Baker is super athletic. The way he can camp under a ball and then while in the air, throw it straight to first. That is something that cannot be taught. That is just something that you just have to have within so great play by Sam Baker and also great play by Danny Gonzalez to make sure to secure that out. So with that, that is going to be two outs in this inning. Last pitch was caught a ball, 1-0 count. So as he takes this pitch, that is also going to be caught a ball, 2-0 count. That's going to be fouled off. So that's going to be a 2-1 count. Last pitch was called a ball. Now you have a 3-1 count on the board. And so now, as that is going to be popped into center, Skyhawks will come together. That will be the win for the Skyhawks. So, yes, that is going to be your game. Skyhawks will take the first game of this series. And tomorrow's game will be starting at 1 o'clock p.m. If you are able to tune in, we sure hope you can. Congratulations to Point University Skyhawks with that. So, kind of looking at how today went, 13 hits for the Skyhawks, 10 runs winning 10 to 4. Cam Seibert will be your winning pitcher of this game. And that will make number 10 for him. So if he is to win next week, which I'm pretty sure he might not appear for the rest of this series, if he is to appear next week and win, he will tie the score record for most wins in a season as a starter with 11. It is senior day. Senior day ceremony will happen after game one, which will start at 1 p.m. So, really look at that. You got to really be proud of how the Skogs were. But, yes, Cam Sauer is the winning pitcher of the day. Look at some of our, our scoring plays we had. I mean, you look at Kenny Jackson with that home run. You look at Slade Meek as he reached the seconds. Zed Barrett was able to advance. Then you had Jason Dower advance. Slade Meek. Then it centers to center field. Zed Barrett with his double to center field, which Kenny Jackson scored on that. Then you follow up with a triple to right field, a two RBI triple where Sam Baker and Zeb Baird scored. Jason Dower with his single had Danny Gonzalez score. Then Zeb Baird's walk had Kenny Jackson advance on the wild pitch. So for the Skyhawks, they're going to move to 29 and 14. They're going to move to 15 and 10 in the conference, continue their hot play. So we're going to end this broadcast off the right way. I'm Deshaun Bullock, the voice of today's game. Our Skyhawk Sports Network staff want to give a big shout-out to them. Tomorrow is our last two home games as a staff. Brad Morales. Morales. I was our producer today. Give a quick shout-out to him, Nacho Fonseca. And Mr. Gonzalo Ross was our camera operators. Want to give a quick shout-out to them. Lauren Perez, and everyone else that was a part of this. We'll have more shout-outs coming tomorrow as we end this Skyhawk broadcast the right way. 
God bless you all. We hope you tune in tomorrow, and together we fly.